Welcome to What to Do When, a podcast from Real Lawyers with Real Perspective, where we explore a variety of legal issues and scenarios. Each week, we focus on a new topic and discuss what to do when and if any of these legal scenarios ever happen to you or a loved one. With over 40 years of combined legal experience, our hosts offer their unique perspectives and insights on a range of real life legal situations. Hello, and welcome to another episode with Kreiser Cardani here in Richmond, Virginia. What's on, the, what's on the docket for today, Scott? What to do when you have tenant issues. Yes, sir. What's a tenant, Will? A tenant is anybody that is staying at a leased property and is paying rent. Okay. So if you're both roommates, is that a tenant issue? It can be. I mean, it certainly can be if you are both paying rent equally. Okay. Uh, but if you have issues with just your, your roommate uh, and, and both of you are on a lease, then... You're just both roommates, right? That's right. Not, that's right. So the lease, the tenant is the person paying the lease, right? That's right. Paying the rent, so to that's speak. That's right. We want to make it simple. Okay. So what do you want to tell us about well, landlords want, and what they need to know? What landlords need to know is that if you have a tenant who is not paying rent or who is breaking the terms of your lease, that you have certain steps that you have to take in order to have those tenants removed. Okay. So let's go through those steps. What are those steps? But before we do that, I just had a thought. I think we need to ask it. So knowing what the lease says is pretty important, right? Absolutely. And having a good lease. I think I see this a lot in these kind of litigations where people grab a couple things off the internet, put them together, hodgepodge, and that can be a real mess, won't it, right? Absolutely. You see people going to LegalZoom or just finding a template online and then filling out the, uh, the address and the amount that's paid and then most of it isn't even enforceable, but I've seen yeah, plenty I, of that. And I've seen actually provisions contradicting each other. And when they both contradict each other, they get thrown out. So you got to be careful. Make sure you contact somebody to get a good lease. We're here to help. But let's talk about that. What? How do you enforce it? So to enforce it, well, there should be a provision in your lease that if X, Y, or Z is broken, that this is the remedy that the landlord has or the remedy that the tenant has if there's something the landlord's not doing. But that's not what we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, so if there is something that uh, the, the tenant is not doing that they should be doing, I'll just use the example of not paying rent, then the landlord in that lease will have a remedy. And so if they're following what the remedy is, all they have to do really is take that lease with them when they go to the court to file. Uh, satisfy the notice requirements. Same What's the notice requirement? What does no that mean, notice? Notice requirement, you really are going to send two different notices, uh, or two notices are, are available. A notice to pay or quit. So if somebody falls behind on rent, haven't paid for a few months, you send them a notice, hey, you owe X number of dollars. Uh, I need to have it paid before the next rent payment is due. If not, I'm not going to file with the court to have you uh, removed, removed from, the, from the premises. Okay. The other option, uh, an option that a lot of people especially during this pandemic period, uh, decided to exercise, had to do with simply telling them, look, after 30 days, I'm terminating your lease. You've had, you violated these terms. I'm not worried about the money anymore. I'm terminating your lease for another reason that we have here. Okay. Um, the other thing too is that I mean, not everybody does have a lease. We have plenty of times where people just have a verbal agreement. Verbal okay. agreement, hey, you can come stay. And you can rent out the, the back the back house and pay me $500 a month. And then when people fall behind on that, uh, you have tenants who think that they don't have to get kicked. They're not going to get kicked out and then nothing's going to happen. So, But in, remember, in Virginia, folks, that verbal contract is still a contract, just like a verbal lease is still a lease. Um, you know, when you get into detailed provisions, it might be a little harder to enforce. But as far as you're going to pay me $500 to live in my basement for every month, and especially when they paid that five hundred dollars for four or five months, then that kind of proves the the terms of the contract. So Absolutely. that's it's important. Going to establish it based on the practices between the two people. So, okay. uh, if you so the first step then is to go ahead and send them a notice for why you were terminating their lease. Okay. Uh, typically, it's going to be a thirty day period. It's going to be you know, thirty days or uh, from the time that right before the next lease uh, rent is due. Yep. Thirty day notice. Uh, if if the notice if the rent hasn't been paid or if they haven't left the premises, then the next step would be to go ahead and file with the court. And what do you file with the court? So we file with the court an unlawful detainer. A lawful detainer is basically setting out that we have a reason for why this tenant should be removed from the premises, whether it's non payment of rent or some other reason. The courts will set a hearing for okay. them to come uh, and answer for this summons and the judge will have evidence presented to him as to whether or not this tenant is going to be allowed to stay. All right. Remember, think about things. Sometimes terms don't work, but unlawful detainer means you are 
What we're claiming is you're holding under the uh, holding into this contract. You're staying in the premises unlawfully, and I want you to be removed. So that requires a judge to do that. And when the judge orders, and you go to court, they put on the evidence. If he finds, he gives the landlord possession. Correct. That's right. So, um, what usually happens then at that point? Well, if, if the judge gives the landlord possession, it means that they have the ability to retake the property after a ten day period. Okay, so ten days. You're gonna have a ten day waiting period because there's a ten day appeal process here in Virginia. So if the tenant decides to appeal, a lot of times they're gonna have to put some money up. Yep. So let's say they haven't paid five thousand dollars, the judge is gonna require them to pay a portion of that money towards the court anyway okay. to to preserve the appeal. Uh, but they have that 10-day period. After 10 days, the landlords have the ability to um, enforce that judgment, enforce the pos- you know, regaining possession by filing a writ of eviction. And so the writ of eviction then, uh, after that 10-day period, goes to the same court. <laughs> the sheriff's um, – it's then sent to the sheriff's department for whatever county or city you're in, and they go out and execute it. And we'll give a 72-hour notice to the tenant that if you know you're still here in 72 hours – we're planning to come in on this day, at this time, and they'll have them removed from the premises. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know if anybody's done this, but, you know, when you do it, it's a pretty ugly process, especially if people aren't leaving. Sometimes you have to get higher movers to move the people's possession into the street, and I've seen that happen. And, you know, you, you don't want that to happen. Landlords don't want that to happen, but you've got to take back property, too. You can't have people living for free, and you have bills to pay. So this is an important part. Will has been doing a lot of work in this and really building um, a really strong practice and helping landlords. And we're here to help you. So, Will, what would you think would be our takeaways for today? Well, I think takeaway number one, and I guess we haven't touched on this, but I would say takeaway number one is that if you are a landlord and you are trying to get somebody removed from the property for non-payment or rent or for some other reason, talk to a lawyer. I can't tell you how many times I sit in court and see landlords try to do this themselves and they waste their time, they waste their money, they're getting delayed because they didn't follow one of these steps. Okay. And so the steps sound simple, right? It really is kind of a, an easy process of what it seems like. But you have judges, especially you know, nowadays, that, that want to do everything they can to try to help the tenants. Mm-hmm. You know, especially if somebody, a landlord goes in there unrepresented, a tenant goes in there rep- unrepresented, the judge is not giving legal advice, yeah. but he is kind of trying to help that tenant as much as he can. So the first thing I would say is reach out to a lawyer to see if this is something that you need help with. Because in most most chances, in, in most cases, it's going to be. So okay. number one, talk to a lawyer. Uh, secondly, uh, the notice requirement I think is the biggest part. The notice requirement of sending a letter uh, to that tenant, letting them know that you have 30 days or whatever the period is. You can 60, it depends what the lease says. You look at the lease first. But 30 days is typical um, when you're trying to give them notice that after this 30-day period, if you haven't complied with what I've told you you violated, most of the time non-payment of rent, then I'm going to file with the court. So that, okay. that piece of paper, that letter that goes to them is probably the and biggest It's just part. a letter, right? It's just a letter. Okay. Um, and then third, I would say that once you get to court, um, make sure that you know what you're asking for. <laughs> because I think a lot of landlords come in and think it's going to be really simple and they don't realize that it's a little bit more than just saying, well, judge, I want my money. Judge, I want my property. Um, so make sure that you, again, I think talk to a lawyer, see if it's something that you're going to need help with. Chances are the lawyer is only going to help make this process a lot easier for you. So those would be the three things that I would say are, are probably the most important when it comes to um, landlord tenant and mostly landlord rights. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Remember to subscribe and like, and we appreciate you joining us on Chrysler Cardani. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of What to Do When. For more episodes, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, and we encourage you to check our archives to listen to previous topics. Tune in next week for a new episode and some fresh perspective from Kreiser Cardani.